It's your host and L&D nurse, Liesl, here to tell you about the sale that we're running on our online birth classes. From Monday, November 20th to Sunday, November 26th, you can access all three of our online birth classes for just $119. For the first time ever, you get the epidural series, the natural series, and the C-section series. Usually priced at $139 each, we're giving you the chance to get into all three versions for just $119 so that you can truly prepare for every possible outcome and approach your birth postpartum and newborn days with total confidence. Don't wait. This offer ends soon. Just head on over to mommylabornurse.com slash Black Friday to take advantage of this never before seen offer. That's mommylabornurse.com slash Black Friday. You're listening to the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast, where you'll gain the tools, knowledge, and confidence you need to erase the unknowns, feel in control, and have an even better birth, no matter how you deliver. My name is Liesl Teen, mom of two, practicing labor and delivery nurse, and your host. From over eight years and counting of working at the bedside, I know that knowledge is the key to an even better birth. So tune in each week to learn about all things pregnancy, birth, and postpartum from me, a labor and delivery nurse that's seen it all. And now let's get into this week's episode. Welcome back to another episode of the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast, your go-to destination for all things pregnancy and birth. You like that cute little (laughs) intro voice I decided to just whip out. I'm your host, Liesl Teen, and today we're diving into a magical moment in every pregnancy journey. Those first baby movements. Yeah, because the truth is figuring out what those first baby kicks feel like can be kind of tricky. Yeah. So side note, went to the fair this past week, um, and I've always said this from the beginning, like when I first felt those first baby kicks uh, with Walter, you know, when you go to the fair and you win one of those goldfish in the plastic bag and you're like holding the goldfish. I know maybe some people haven't ever done this, but when you're holding the goldfish in that little plastic bag and the little goldfish like boop, boop, like bumps up on the side to your hands, you can feel that like little kind of tapping. I swear. That's exactly what those first little baby kicks felt like for me with Walter. It's like a little, little baby goldfish in there. (laughs) So today I am going to unpack quickening, it's called, in pregnancy and provide you with the information that you need to know. And after this, you'll know exactly what to look for when it comes to those first baby movements. So let's get down to it. What is quickening? Yeah, said it in the intro, but... To put simply, quickening refers to those first fetal movements that you'll feel during pregnancy. It's felt at different times for everyone. It kind of depends on where your placenta's at and how many pregnancies you had, but we'll get into that later. But there's a large range of, you know, kind of when you start to feel these first baby kicks. So a mom that has experienced pregnancy before and these little baby kicks, they might notice it a little bit earlier than someone who has never been pregnant before and this is their first time because as you can assume when you're pregnant for the first time, you you know, you're kind of on wash, but you don't really know what you're supposed to be feeling for. And someone who has had a baby before is like, oh yeah, okay, that sensation that's happening right now, that's my baby. Because yeah, it can be difficult to differentiate quickening from things like gas, right? Gas bubbles and just normal digestion. So when do you feel this quickening? So it can be felt at different times, like I said, for different people, but usually somewhere between 16-ish to 20-ish weeks. If it is not your first baby and you have experienced quickening before, there's a good chance that you might notice it even earlier or closer to that, you know, 16 week mark. And like I said, the reason for this is because you just know what to look for or feel for, right? And you're less likely to confuse it with gas or digestion or just tummy troubles in general. 
Now, the location of that placenta might also play into when you feel those first movements. So if you have an anterior placenta, uh, sometimes that can act as a little barrier and muffle those early movements. So an anterior placenta, if we think about the body, right, the anterior portion of your body is like the front side and the posterior portion of your body is on the back side. So think about your body basically being split in a plane uh, from head to toe, right, like kind of horizontally and the anterior is on the front, posterior is on the back. So if you have an anterior placenta, if you're standing, your uterus, you know, is in your belly, that placenta is just on that anterior side of your uterus. And the anterior side is a lot closer to your stomach surface where you have a lot more nerve endings and you're more likely to feel those baby kicks. So if there's a the old placenta in the way, that can kind of muffle things for your brain. And just know, you know, not a cause for concern at all, but you probably won't feel quickening quite as early because of it. Sometimes people don't start feeling baby movements until 23, 24 weeks, okay, if they have anterior placentas. And usually if you have an anterior placenta, it is found on that anatomy scan. So somewhere between 18, 20 weeks, you'll have that anatomy scan. They'll say, oh, you have an anterior placenta. That's probably why you haven't really felt too many baby kicks yet. Now, second question, when can my partner feel my baby move? So, you know, anterior placenta aside, your partner might start feeling your baby move anywhere from 20-ish to 24 weeks, okay? Keep in mind that there are things that might impact when this happens for your partner, right? So if you're getting close to that 24-week mark and your partner still hasn't felt your baby move, don't panic, okay? This is just a, a range and it can definitely be way far past 24 weeks before you can really feel it on the outside. And again, an anterior placenta is going to delay when this happens, right? Because of that placenta cushioning, those movements. But your anatomy might also play a role in it too, okay? If you're a plus size mama with, you know, you just have a little extra fat around that area, just like your placenta is, you know, fat tissue muffles that sensation as well. Okay. So your partner might not feel your baby move quite as early, but trust me, it happens. Once they get bigger, they kick a lot harder and it just is easy to feel. Could you use a little help with your baby registry and knowing what you need to be doing to stay on track in that second trimester? Don't worry. My free second trimester prep pack is here for you. Inside, you'll find helpful PDFs, including a second trimester checklist so that you feel certain nothing's fallen through those cracks with 22 more to do's and make sure not to skip number 15. (laughs) You'll also get a baby registry checklist that includes diapers to clothing to all the gear. (laughs) Get insider tips on all the must haves. And you'll also get our old wives tale worksheet created just for fun, just to see if you can guess your baby's sex based on 20 old wives tales. So to get yourself organized in that second trimester, simply head on over to mommylibernurse.com slash second trimester. That's mommylibernurse.com slash S-E-C-O-N-D trimester to grab your free second trimester prep pack today. Now, what does quickening feel like? Okay, what are those first little movements feel like. I talked about the goldfish thing in the beginning, but there's a lot of different ways to describe it. I think you could pull 20 different moms to ask what quickening feels like, and they probably would all say different things or you'd get 15 different answers. But most commonly, I hear that it feels like little bubbles or little flutters, like a little butterfly in your belly. But this brings me to my next point. What do flutters feel like? Okay, so if you've ever, you know, experienced like true butterflies in your stomach, right? Not real butterflies. But, you know, if you give a speech or you have to do something where you're a little bit nervous, you kind of get those, you know, it's just like a little sensation. Sometimes it just feels a little, you know, in there. Well, a lot of people describe that that is a similar experience. It's just like a little nervous, anxious butterfly in your belly. Now, I've heard it be described like a lot of different things, but one thing that I have not heard it be described like is 
cramping. Okay, so it's not typically felt uh, like cramps. So if you're having cramps, you know, in your belly during pregnancy, that can be normal. But cramping is usually caused by different things. Okay, so if you're having, you know, kind of persistent cramping, it's probably not your baby movement. It's probably just that you're dehydrated, honestly, because that's usually when people get cramps. But just know it's not usually associated with with baby kicks. Now, where do you feel these baby kicks? So to answer this question broadly, right, is they're felt in your belly. Okay, (laughs) shocking, right? (laughs) So earlier in your pregnancy, your uterus is still pretty low in your abdomen. So you can expect to feel those initial movements pretty low down, pretty near towards your pubic bone. But as your pregnancy progresses and your uterus starts to kind of rise up out of, you know, that pelvic bowl, right, your pelvis, you'll start to notice that the movements are just a little bit higher up. And as you get into your third trimester, your baby's growing, right? Those baby movements will begin to feel more like true kicks and jabs and less like flutters. And sometimes they're annoying. (laughs) They're cute, but sometimes you're like, why? Stop. Why are you kicking me so much? So you've heard me say that these first baby flutters can feel different for different people, but we haven't really covered exactly, except for the butterflies, what they might feel like. So I actually pulled the MLM community to see what they had to say. And here are a few of the responses. I'm also going to go to this reel that I did and read some of the comments because, yeah, it just there's a lot of different answers. So someone said, like someone is thumping you from the inside of your stomach. Yep. Popcorn going off in the microwave. Yeah, like gas, right? I felt like little fishies in my belly. That's what I said. This person said, I felt like someone was texting my phone erratically on silent while my phone was in my stomach. (laughs) That's kind of funny. That's kind of accurate too. This one says, it felt like the bubble in a snow globe. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Like, you know, you have a snow globe and sometimes you get a little bit of air in there and it just kind of boop, 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 boop. (laughs) This person says, like, a tiny chef was flipping pancakes in there. You guys are so creative. (laughs) This person said, it felt like someone rubbing my belly from the inside. Feels like little bubbles bursting. Boop, boop, boop. (laughs) And slide. Boop, boop, boop. Feels like I opened a soda underwater, but then the pressure stops shortly. Interesting. Feels like movement of a waterbed or a wave-like motion, like holding a moth or butterfly in my hand. This person said, I felt ticklish. Hmm. Yep. This person also said, like, someone was tickling me from the inside. Felt like muscle twitches. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, this one's funny. (laughs) This one says, I thought it felt like the light tap your Apple Watch does when you close one of your goal rings. (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) Felt like someone riding a toy car inside. She says, I miss those moves so much. Oh, I kind of do sometimes too. That Not when it's really, really like they're kicking the crap out of you. But yeah, it's like, it's so... (sighs) It felt like pop rocks in my belly, like a fish swimming past your legs in the ocean. Ooh. Oh, this person says, my cousin's friend described it as when someone lightly kicks the back of your car seat. I thought that was a perfect description. Yes, I agree. Or like, you know, when you're in an airplane and you have a kid behind you or something and they just kind of like kick your seat or you feel the person put their tray table down or something. So many different ways to describe it. They're fun though, right? So I hope I've equipped you with uh, some knowledge, right? And info if you're in this stage of your pregnancy and not quite feeling those baby kicks uh, yet. You kind of know now what to look for. You can identify them a little bit easier when they do happen. But even with everything that you learned today, it can still be kind of tough to differentiate between quickening and gas bubbles. I know that waiting to feel those first kicks too can feel like an eternity, right? Especially when you're feeling like crap in that first trimester. I've been there. (laughs) But trust me, one day you'll be sitting around and feel those little little fishies or that little popcorn or that Apple Watch (laughs) and you'll just know. And it's going to be one of the most memorable parts of your entire pregnancy. All right, the sound of that heartbeat means it's time for this week's segment of Birth It Up Babies. Okay, this one says, I had my first baby last week, a beautiful baby girl. I took your natural birth class and it was so helpful. I labored at home for seven hours 
and then had a completely medication-free birth at a birth center surrounded by my husband, midwives, and doula after an additional six hours, so 13 hours total. No interventions needed. It was intense and magical, and I'm so happy I got the birth experience I envisioned, even though many people doubted. Oh, I'm sorry that you felt like people were doubting you, but I'm so glad that you got your birth experience that you envisioned. I believe it's because of not only my support team, but my preparation and mindset. Yes, girl, that's the trifecta right there, right? If you want to have an even better birth, just like this mama, head on over to mommylabornurse.com slash courses to learn more about our three online on-demand birth classes. Now, before we end this episode, I thought it'd be, you know, good to just remind you guys about counting kicks, right? This quickening is very different from counting kicks later in your pregnancy, but it's always a good reminder when we're talking about movement to remember the guidelines of how to count your baby's kicks and when to start counting baby kicks and all of those things. I know I've done podcast episodes on this before, but always a good reminder. So remember, movement matters, okay? A baby's movements are an important sign of their well-being in the third trimester. And research does show that keeping a daily record of your baby's movements and patterns during that third trimester is an easy and free and reliable way to monitor your baby's well-being in addition to regular prenatal visits, of course. My favorite resource to send people to is Push Pregnancy. They are an organization that was started by moms who have uh, had stillbirth babies And their whole mission is to end preventable stillbirth. So they have some really great resources on kit counts. And I'm going to read verbatim what their little flyer says about movements because it's really, really straightforward and really great. So starting at 26 to 28 weeks, it's not just, you know, 28 weeks anymore. If you're starting to feel consistent movement by 26 weeks, you absolutely can start counting and monitoring your kicks. So starting at that point, you want to ask yourself, how often is baby active each day and what times of day? How long does it typically take my baby to get to 10 kicks? How strong are my baby's movements? And does my baby respond to certain sounds or pokes? Knowing your baby's movements is critical because no one knows your baby better than you do. Standards like 10 kicks in two hours are outdated. That's a very broad way of counting kicks, okay? We need to be more in tune with our babies. And if you are noticing any changes, you always ask, okay? If you feel any changes in your baby's movements, don't waste any time drinking cold water, drinking juice, you know, eating something, moving around, trying to stimulate baby. Just go and get checked out. Remember that baby's movements don't slow down towards the end of pregnancy. Babies don't run out of room. You should be counting your baby's kicks, monitoring your baby's kicks every day. And a great app that you can use to help is called Count the Kicks. It's a free app that you can get on the App Store or Google Play. Very easy to use. And basically all you do is you try to do it at the same time every day and you count and you set your timer, see how long it takes for your baby to move 10 times in that time period, okay? Like I said, you do want your baby to be moving 10 times in two hours, but some babies are gonna move 10 times in those first 10 minutes, okay? Some babies are going to be moving 10 kicks in two hours, but it's more about noticing trends. So if you know that your baby is one of those that's a quick mover, always, you know, hitting those movements really fast. And then one day it's taken your baby really, really long to get those 10 kicks. Even though it's within that two hour mark, that is abnormal for you. Okay. So that is an indication to go get checked out. On the contrary, if your baby is one that usually you know, you know your baby, right? Your baby always moves. Your baby always hits the that 10 kicks in two hours. But today, they're wild. Something's weird, okay? They're going crazy in there. That's also abnormal, okay? And we can want to get that checked out. So yeah, count those kicks. Enjoy those first baby flutters and that quickening movement that is oh so unique in experiencing pregnancy. 
Next week on the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast, we are going to be doing a birth story with my good friend, Natalie Bacon. This episode, I recorded it last week with her and I'm just so excited to share it with you guys. I know it's going to be like a fan favorite because once again, Natalie, this is her second time on the podcast and she just, she is so wise. Um, and I'm so excited to hear, you know, have you guys hear her birth stories and just what we got into in that episode. So make sure you stay tuned next week. I will see you guys then. Same time, same place. Already feeling a little more confident about pregnancy, birth, and newborn life? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can continue to erase the unknowns and never miss an episode. And if you're looking for even more, Instagram is definitely where I hang out the most. Come join our community of more than a half a million moms for birth education, tips, and solidarity. You can find me at mommy.labornurse. Check out today's show notes and a searchable library of every Mommy Labor Nurse podcast episode at mommylabornurse.com slash podcast. And while you're there, be sure to head to the blog to learn about our online birth classes too. See you next week. And remember, you can have an even better birth no matter how you deliver.